cheeky back heel. With ease, Miguel Aziz, his first goal for Portsmouth. Into the path of Smith Rowe, into the box, Smith Rowe scores! A really deserved first goal in Huddersfield Town Colours. The January transfer window is up and running and away from Hell End is back and we have some you know, pretty obvious news, something we've been expecting to be announced for a long time and that is Mauro Bandiera has returned from his loan at Colchester United. It did not work out the way we had expected it to. This was, I believe, the first loan move that the academy actually made this summer. Bandiera was there for preseason, he was involved in a lot of friendlies kind of got in and out of the lineup before an injury uh, and then was recalled recently after not returning really to the squad even after returning from injury so we're going to open up with just a little chat on Mauro Bandiera himself the player and what to look forward to in the future because I think there's been a lot of chat about potential midfield options Amadou Onana is potentially seen as somebody who's going to come in this January and let's be real Mauro Bandiera not going to be the first midfielder to get a chance in Arsenal's first team but a good player nonetheless, and somebody to really keep an eye on because he has something that Arsenal's midfield really has been lacking without Thomas Partey, and that's the ability to play vertical passes. Bandiera is a 19-year-old who was born in Portugal but grew up here in England, spending much of his youth at QPR's academy before joining Arsenal in August of 2016. He signed his first professional contract six years later in the summer of 2022 and actually made the Arsenal first team match day squad three times last season, once in the Europa League and the final two fixtures in the Premier League season. You know, I feel like it went very under the radar because at that point we had already been out of the title race and it's not expect, expected to have seen him play or, or be a part of the first team, but that's quite a feat for a player who really only started playing for the under-21s last year. He made that natural jump from the under-18s to the under-21s in that season, and by the end of the season, had worked his way into Arsenal's first team. No matter how you split it, no matter what injuries you're looking at, whoever else is in the academy, Mauro Bandiera was a first-team player, or at least a squad player, for the back, at, back end of the season last year. Uh, and he had an especially, especially good run with the under-21s when he was moved to playing kind of as an inverted right back after a couple of loan moves and a couple of injuries that had forced, you know, the hand of Mehmet Ali into finding another player who could fit there. And Bandiera was excellent in that role, and we're going to get into that in a second. Quickly, I'll touch again on his season so far at Colchester United, where he's made 11 appearances, only three starts. And as I mentioned, he picked up a knee injury early on, which saw him miss time he had to play under multiple different managers. The side has really been struggling. And, you know, we really do expect to see him get a second half loan. But if not, there are a lot of interesting things to look out for here in Bandiera and, and his abilities. He grew up as a box-to-box -box midfielder. His physical traits obviously point to that. Like, if you just watch him play, you would think this is a very natural box-to-box -box midfielder. He can make long runs on the ball, dribbling into open space. He's got the physicality to win duels. And he knows how to protect the ball in tight spaces. Over time at Hale End, and mostly we saw a huge jump in this, I would say in ages 16 to 18, is his ability to be a vertical threat with his passing. His passing range really increased at a rapid pace over the course of, I would guess, 2021 to 2023, when he was starting to play as a deeper lying midfielder who was able to get forward and, and eat into that space. A lot of times we see, especially kind of in the academy setup, we'll see players receive the ball and recycle it into space or try and do something on their own. The thing I love about Bandiera is he really likes to play vertical passes rather than recycle play. He likes to take his time on the ball. It's so much patience on the ball. And that doesn't mean, you know, dribbling into dribbling in circles, dribbling back, playing it ball, the ball back and receiving it again. It truly just means in a dribble or two, he can decide if there is a vertical option and waiting that pass perfectly and for the right moment to release his attackers and continue up the pitch. He has not only has the vision and creativity to change the angle of a ball and cut a ball back when his body shape is open and then reverse the pass, but also the ability to perfectly weight a pass to create the most potential danger. He allows the attacker to stay in stride attacking the goal. And this is probably one of the most important things as a vertical passer. And as I mentioned, we're missing that with Thomas Partey so much in the side right now. We don't have that player who's making that pass consistently, who's looking to get his head up and within a dribble or two, make that forward pass. Yes, sometimes you lose possession because of it, but it adds another layer of attack to the team and a way to quickly transition that Arsenal have really struggled to find. As I mentioned, Bandera will happily eat space up on the ball as well. He never waits to dribble, though. 
always keeping his head up, always using different body feints to send defenders the wrong way. He's not going to necessarily strike you with his skill moves. That's not Mauro Bandiera's game. But what he does is he's really quick to shift direction. He's really quick to almost make the ball move without touching it in a way that sends a defender the opposite way. And then there's the ball striking. And he's potentially the best ball striker at Hale End currently who has made an impact or made it to the first team. He can absolutely smash for the ball. He keeps it low. He can let it rise. He has incredible accuracy to aim for the corners of the net, use just enough whip to bend it and keep it out of the keeper's reach without actually taking pace off of the ball. He can run onto a ball and hit it first time with precision or cut it back onto either foot and bend it into the top corner. He really is multifaceted in that way and seems to choose the right option oftentimes, keeping a defender rooted to their spot. And on top of all of these technical skills he has possessed as an attacking midfielder for much of his youth, Bandiera has added a new level to his game, as I mentioned in the past 12 months, playing both deeper in midfield and most importantly and most recently as an inverted right back over the past 12 months. This is because Mara was never afraid of a duel. He has excellent timing to stick a foot in and keep possession of the ball. He uses his stout frame, his ability to get his body between the man and the ball, and then turn out of trouble, keep possession, and use all those other incredible facets, like his vertical play and his ability to dribble into space and that first little bit of burst to actually become a creative threat. And the key to Mauro Bandiera's inverted right back ability that I think is so special is he can really step in to midfield and play as a deep lying playmaker. He has a lot of experience as a six, but not necessarily as someone so defensive. We've kind of seen that with Kivior recently, right? Like he's been having to play that inverted left back role sometimes. And when he steps in, yes, he can kind of control possession. He's not going to lose the ball easily, but he doesn't necessarily have that passing range to actually advance play and be kind of that Swiss army knife that Sinchenko has done so beautifully. And Mauro Bandiera can do just that. He doesn't have the long legs or the long strides of Amadou Onana. I'm not going to say he's an Amadou Onana replacement if we weren't to sign him, but Mauro Bandiera can provide a lot of the same things that we need out of another player and midfielder that we don't currently have. You pair him next to Declan Rice and give him the freedom to both be a physical menace in duels, but also a creative player, and Bandiera is going to take complete control of that. In all seriousness, the most likely outcome here is Mauro Bandera goes on another loan and hopefully finds a place where he can play week in and week out. It would be a waste for him to stay at the under-18 level because he needs to adjust to the pace of the senior game. But I think he's really become one of the most underrated players in the academy, especially because he made such a large leap in such a short period of time that people didn't get the chance to understand the hype. But as you're seeing here, and for those of you who are listening via audio, you should go check it out. There is so much to like about his game. Speaking of impressive midfielders, Charlie Patino is back in the starting lineup in Luke Williams' first match in charge for Swansea City in the FA Cup, and he's back with a bang. Scored in the 47th minute, turned out to be the winning goal. Uh, He nearly scored in the first half as well. I mean, Charlie Patino is really playing in such a different role every single match, and he's really kind of finding his way very early on. He's finding his footing. He's figuring out how he can be the best possible threat. And I mean, this was just an absolute masterclass in being a central midfielder in the sense of the attacking third. He picked his spots to be on the right-hand side. He picked his spots to be on the left-hand side. He picked his spots to really find space in between the lines to receive. And then after that, find his opportunity to be a threat in the box. That was the role he was given. And instead of trying to kind of relax into his natural position, he really took absolute control of that. In the first half, there was a ball headed down from the back post. Charlie was kind of on his own right inside the penalty spot, and he actually put a great header on it just under the bar. Goalie got a hand to it for a corner kick, but again, just doing such a good job popping up into open spaces in the box, right? It's not just a matter of making late runs into the box. It's being smart and timing it so that you can run onto it and and be a real threat and not just, you know, get onto the ball and then what do you do from there? He nearly drew a penalty a few minutes later. This is the kind of thing that just shows how intelligent Charlie Patino is. He saw when he received the ball, he probably was going to get rammed into into the back. So he put himself between the player that was defending and the ball. To That way, if the player was trying to get to the ball, they would have to go through Charlie's back, which they did. He didn't get the penalty call, but I love this effort from Charlie Patino. He's creating threat out of nearly nothing. And then the goal that he scored was just genius movement in the box. This is not something you've necessarily, or I've even necessarily, ever seen from Charlie Patino at any level. But just watch as he's constantly repositioning himself to be on the exact angle he needs to be on for the cross coming in. He sneaks behind his marker, making the ball playable for his fellow attacker so he can get a foot onto it before it curls into the goalkeeper's open arms. 
just a beautiful, beautiful goal in every sense of the way. And moments later, he does just almost the exact same thing, moving himself into a position to be a threat, puts in a great headed cross that's just out of the striker's reach, but he really had defenders guessing on where he was going to be by constantly moving himself around, not standing still, not being static, not always being in the box. That way that the defenders don't know he's a constant threat. And the late movement was just... He should have been picked out even one more time for an easy goal, but this was just truly an incredible match from Charlie from every attacking standpoint. The most central I've seen him play, allowing him to choose where the danger can be, allowing him to use his own intelligence. Of course, there was some left-hand sided bias. That's going to happen with Charlie Bettino, just based on the player that he is. But then even the second goal for Swansea came off of a ball, but Bettino tried to play in over the top. He tried to make an aggressive pass. He tried to play vertically. And because of that, the defender headed it right back into the danger and his teammate turned it into a goal. You know, Charlie is just playing with so much attacking freedom. He's adding so much danger to Swansea's attacks. And it looks like Luke Williams has found a role early on that he likes for Patino. And again, let's not think about these random Juventus links. Charlie Patino is going to finish the seasons with Swansea. He's going to come back. He is the heir to Granit Xhaka's throne. I'm not giving up on that. He is the perfect player for us. Unfortunately, Brooke Norton Cuffey picked up a slight knee injury. Uh, just before in training this week. It looks like he'll be out only a few weeks. The manager did not seem too concerned. Arthur Aconquo kept a clean sheet against Shrewsbury. He made two saves, both early on in the first 15 minutes. Both were pretty even saves, uh, pretty easy saves. One just three minutes in on a long shot that fell right into his arms. Uh, and the second save came basically on what could have been a kind of a more dangerous attack, but the, the attacker couldn't get much behind it. Uh, Tyrese John Jules made his first start for Derby County. Took all the way until January, but he played 63 minutes in a 3-1 win. He was 16 of 18 passing. He got a crucial touch in the opening goal in midfield. He was able to flick it forward, which turned into the flick that was the assist. So it was a pass to assist. You can just see how the technique that he has. Like even on a bouncing ball in between two defenders, he was able to perfectly weight it and, and pass it to a man in front of him who was able to play in a dangerous ball on goal. And unfortunately, he didn't get too involved otherwise. He got into some really nice attacking zones. His movement off the ball, always great. Uh, but I do think he kind of struggles when he's kind of not necessarily as a right winger, but it's a little bit more of an undefined role. He really needs to play as that furthest most center forward. That's where he knows how to operate best. That's how you get the most out of Tyrese John Jules. Mika Beerith, as many of you saw, who is number one on Hale End Productions power rankings this week. Motherwell's match was postponed, so he did not play. Alex Kirk played the full 90 in a nil-nil draw with Maidenhead. Bromley is now five undefeated every time Alex Kirk has been in the side. Omar Rekik is still out injured, and we are waiting to find out if his loan will be extended. Salah Adid Ulan Mhand is still out injured. Nathan Butler Oyudehi played 10 minutes in a 2-1 win over Portsmouth. Keto Taylor Hart, not in the Bromley squad. Billy Vigar had a really nice match. He started in a 2-2 draw with Torque. Uh, he had four or five shots on goal. I kind of lost count. Got in some really excellent positions. I did pick up a yellow card. But honestly, like, and you'll see here, a lot of these great opportunities are thanks to his excellent movement around the box. I've really been impressed by that all season. I'm not going to say I've watched all these Eastburn Borough games. That's not the truth. But I try to watch as much as I can. And then I try and watch, you know, the full highlight packages that they tend to come out with, like, 15, 20-minute highlight packages. And even in the times that Billy Vigar doesn't get on the ball, I've been really impressed with his movement around the box. And, you know, if he was a more clinical finisher, he wouldn't be playing at this level. And that's the difference. But just look at some of these angles he put himself into. Look at some of the opportunities he put himself on. With better deliveries and, and better crosses and, and obviously better finishing, Billy Vigar could be sitting on a pretty huge goal tally this year uh and you know he's got excellent leaping ability he's very athletic i do think there's a future for him in, in professional football not just in non-league football uh, but a few more goals score a uh, goal scored in the second half of the season would go a long way for billy vigar's future a uh, catalan sir john featured in a friendly for rapid bucharesti during their winter break Mauro Bandiera, as I mentioned at the top was recalled from Col colchester's loan he's been training with arsenal's under 21s this week We've got a new man in charge here of the loan system, so I'd expect to see some players go on loan here in the next coming weeks. And Henry Jeffcott, still no matches since December 15th. It's been a bit of a light week. We probably have another light week coming up. So, you know, if you do have some questions, please drop them below in the comments. I'll try and get to them as much as possible. I could always rip like a, just a quick Q&A um, aside from the video episode if necessary. Hit me on Twitter if you got questions as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on Away From Hail End right below. You should see it right down there. Hit the like button. It looks a lot like this. 
Uh, and, and as I said, leave me some comments. Find me on Twitter at Hailland Productions and on TikTok. Doing a lot more stuff over there. Kind of quicker recaps, talking about little to topics here and there. And again, I'm going to plug Yanks Abroad. If you like the way I present information here, quick, concise, to the point, a little bit of analysis, but not too over the top where it's hard to understand. That's what the idea of Yanks Abroad is. It's me and my buddy Casey. We're chatting Premier League. We're chatting Euros prediction episode is out. We're having a lot of fun. We'd love to have you over there. So subscribe there, subscribe here, and we'll see you next week on Away From Hail End.